All right, consider this my annual rant about post-processing and editing, something like I feel I have to do very often because this is a topic that keeps coming up very frequently, especially after I share videos of my editing, because there is always someone really quick to point out that that is not photography. It always surprises me though, because other than using the healing brush to remove elements here and there in just a handful of my images, my editing is very, very basic. Stuff that photographers have been doing in the darkroom for almost 200 years now. Anyway, I'm not making this video to defend my work. I don't care when someone labels my images as digital art. Honestly, I've been told much worse things than that. I know what I love to create, and I'm going to keep doing it. I'm not trying to convince you to change the way you work either. Rather, this video is for those who are still trying to find their voice in photography because they might see those comments and believe that post-processing is something to be avoided, that photography is supposed to be done in some specific way, that anything else is a lesser approach. Nothing farther from the truth. Photography is all about experimenting, about keeping an open mind, at least until you find your own language. Indeed, post-processing, be it in a traditional darkroom or on a computer, has always been an important part of photography. Maybe not so much for photojournalists or documentary photographers, but to think that the images made by fine art photographers like Ansel Adams or the uh, Michael Kenna I so very much admire are somehow straight out of camera is to not understand photography or how these photographers work. The idea of straight out of camera is a very misleading one because it implies that there has been no manipulation. But of course, that's not true. You see, back when I shot film with my beloved Bronica SQAI, I used to shoot Ilford HP5 and I used to push it a couple of stops. I did it that way because that gave me the look I was looking for moody images that I try to replicate now with my editing in the digital darkroom. The final images are very similar. Which one do you consider more manipulated, less photography, and why is that? The Holga, yeah, I bought it again. Take the Holga as another example. That plastic toy camera paired with some, I don't know, lomography film stock produces results that could be compared to some extreme Instagram filters. Is the uh, Holga real photography while applying filters that achieve the same is a lesser digital art? Or take Fuji cameras, which have film simulations baked in. They take the raw data, apply some fixed adjustments, and produce a JPEG that is supposed to resemble a specific film stock. Technically, they are photographs straight out of camera, but what's the difference between that and applying a filter afterwards. Actually, one feature I love to have in my digital camera is to be able to load my very own preset so the adjustments that I have to apply in editing software can be automatically applied to the raw file in camera. The question is, would this make a difference when it comes to labeling that photography or digital art? The images from my Bronica, the Holga, or a Fuji camera that uses film simulations depart from reality as much as the ones I create with my digital camera and edit in Lightroom afterwards. The only difference is when those adjustments are applied – before the shooting, during the shooting, or after the shooting. But no matter when that's done, they all accomplish the same. The most important aspect here is that they all should be conscious decisions choices taken by the photographer to bring their vision to life. And again, we are only talking about very basic editing here. We are talking about burning and dodging, adding some contrast, playing with vignetting, adding some grain, and so on. But things can get really complicated really quick if we add more extreme editing to the conversation, like removing elements from the frame using something like the healing tool in Lightroom. The argument here goes this way. There was a person there and you remove them, so yours is not a photograph anymore. It's something else. The thing is that I could have removed that person with a long exposure instead. In fact, I use long exposures this way to remove people from the scenes I photograph, from very busy places, or to remove details I don't want, like ripples on the water or 
clouds in the sky. Clearly, this is manipulation, but it's one that happens in camera. Sure, it might require more effort in the field, but the final result is still a lie. It's not an accurate representation of what was there. This raises the question, how come the healing brush is digital art, but the long exposure is photography? Should we stop calling Michael Kenna's work photography then? I don't think there is an easy answer to this question. It is a very complicated topic. Every photographer will have a slightly different opinion, and only them can say where they draw the line between this is fur and this is too much. Now, it is true that the digital darkroom is more powerful and easier to use than the traditional darkroom. You have more control, you can work faster, and it's more accessible too. Today, anyone can do it. But unless you are doing some crazy stuff in Photoshop, like changing the light of the scene, I don't see how today's photography is different from what was going on a hundred years ago. So please, go ahead and shoot RAW and process your images in post. Or just shoot JPEGs and don't touch them again. Do whatever pleases you, do whatever you have to do to create what you want to create. Your creative process is for you to choose. Just be intentional about it. Don't do something just because that's the way it's supposed to be, or because someone said that's how it should be done. Art is supposed to break away from conventions anyway. All right, this is it. We'll talk about this topic again next year. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.